hey, today I'm going to show you how you can turn any image into a 3D object. We are going to be using three programs, which is Photoshop, ZBrush and Blender. And if you don't have ZBrush, you can always get ZBrush Core or even ZBrush Core Mini. And it will still have all the necessary tools. First thing I did is I've created 2K square inside Photoshop. Then I'm going to type my name and I'm going to use this Mirage Gothic font, which you can find on that font or something like that. Let's scale it a bit so it will fit our square quite nicely. It doesn't have to be square, but I always use square, so I recommend it to you too. Okay, now we have our nickname and we have background. What we need to do is press Ctrl Shift Alt E to create new layer and then press Ctrl I to invert this. You can do it in uh, different other ways, but this is how I do it. Now we are gonna save it. And for this, I'm gonna be using BMP format because ZBrush works quite nicely with BMP. Let's open ZBrush now. That's how ZBrush looks right away. But what we need to do is we need to go to documents and here we need to select resize, check this button and then press new document. So this uh, workspace would be just a bit bigger. And then what we need to do is go to this cylinder, just press it and here you can select your tool just select plain 3D and now with the left uh, mouse button just drag it on your document. Then what you need to do is press this edit button and then make polymesh 3D. I know it's kind of weird why we need to do that but trust me it's just how ZBrush works and in a couple of days you'll be just fine with this process. Okay what we need to do now is first of all let's change our material to something else. What I like to use is this uh, matcap gray and I also have it here. I have skin shade, matcap and fast shader, but we are going to be using matcap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl D uh, like a couple of times and you can see uh, active points right here. And we are going to press once, twice, three times, four times, five times and maybe six times till we have something around 4 million polygons. But if you are on a laptop, you can use uh, 200k polygons and it will be just fine. Now you can slow down the video just a bit because I'm gonna be talking shortcuts. First thing, we're gonna press Ctrl and then just hold it. Uh, this is the mask pan. And then holding Ctrl, you go to stroke, select, drag rectangle then to alpha and here you need to press import and then import the image we've created inside Photoshop. Okay, now we have our drag rectangle and alpha loaded. And as you can see, since we had it inverted, we don't have any problems with it and it will be transparent. Next thing is kind of tricky. You need to zoom out a bit out of your plane and then holding control, you can drag this, um, you can draw pretty much this mask with your alpha that we just created. And once you dragged it to make it somewhat of a square, you can press spacebar and holding spacebar, you can drag this thing on your canvas. And now let's just uh, do some manipulations to line it uh, onto this plane so it fits quite nicely. I think this is fine for me. Now I'm gonna go and open this subtle menu. And here what we need to do is select extract. And inside extract, I'm gonna uncheck double, uncheck tip border, and for thickness, I'm gonna select something like uh, 0.2 maybe. Now we can just drag it, rotate it. Let's rotate it and press extract. This is just a preview of the thickness we'll get once we'll press accept. But if this is uh, fine for you, and this is certainly fine for me, uh, I can press accept. But if you are not happy with the result, you can always change uh, the thickness value. You can either make it super thick or super thin. It's up to you, it's up to your project. And then press accept. Okay, now we have it. Now what we can do is hide our plane and we have our text just like that. All we can do is press this perspective thing to see um, our text just a bit better. And what I also like to do is I like to select this document and here uh, I like to zero this range out so we can kind of see our result a bit better. 
And let's also get to material and select skin shade. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control and drag uh, this mask right here and then just let it go. And now we have our text unmasked. If you press Shift F, you can see the amount of polygons. Uh, right now it's kind of high on polygons. As you can see, it has active points of 700K and this is like too much for us. So what we can do is we can go here to geometry and here inside Dynamesh, let's select something like 200 and press Dynamesh. And now we have much less polygons going on. And this is amazing because now we can make our draw size bigger. To make uh, it bigger, you just hold S and you select the draw size you need or you can go here or you can also use bracket keys to make it smaller or bigger. And then holding down shift, you can go like that and make our text smoother and make it something like that, like roundy. Uh, if that's not the effect you are going for, you can just press Ctrl Z a couple of times and make it more sharp again. And inside ZBrush now you can use any tools to get this text to the point you like it, to the point where you like it and to the point where it fits your creative needs. Quick tip, if you are using snake hook, you can activate Sculptis Pro to create geometry on the fly and this way you can create some cool shapes. Now we can either use the summation master or we can just zero mesh it to the point we have some nice geometry going on so blender will work uh, smooth without any lag. To do so we need to go to zero mesher and press zero mesh with target polycons of 5 it's pretty much fine it's just default settings but it's fine. Just press zero mesh and see what's gonna happen and now we have a somewhat around 32k polygons. Now we can smooth it once again, move the points once again just a bit. Don't forget about the back of your text, it's also important. Now we have pretty much the final product. What you need to do now is go to export and select OBJ as an export. Let's load it into Blender using Wavefront OBJ Legacy. And as you can see, we have our text inside Blender. But make sure to right click on it and press Shade Smooth or even use Subdivision Surface. It depends on your geometry, but in my case, it can actually help. From this point you can just start creating some cool shaders inside Blender, some cool animations and again it could be any image, it's not necessarily should be a text, it could be like any image, just make sure to make it black and white and you can layer the subjects on top of each other to create some cool results. Thank you so much for watching, if you have something to say, if you'd like to support me, I also have Patreon where I post artwork, breakdowns, tutorials and all that. I have tutorials for Blender, ZBrush and Cinema 4D as well as many other plugins and softwares. So make sure to check it out. There is also a tier for everyone who'd like to get some wallpapers from me or maybe just to log into our Discord server. So yeah, check it out. The link's on your screen right now, uh, also in the description. I also have my Instagram page where I post my daily life stories and artworks, obviously, but yeah. I have two Instagrams by the way, so yeah, if you would like to check them out, also the links are in the description for this video. 
So yeah, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. And thank you so much for watching and have an amazing holidays and bye.